Welcome to the CV Day by K Education. You know why the venting is essential? Venting clears blood and air from the heart, offering the surgical team a better view of the operating field, especially, especially crucial involving the aortic procedures. It helps avoid excessive filling and stretching of the left ventricle caused by residual blood return or aortic regurgitation, protecting the heart muscle from strain. By keeping the heart decompressed, venting facilitates more effective cardioplegia delivery and cooling, helping to preserve heart tissue during arrest. It assists in removing air from the cardiac chambers, particularly the left heart, thereby lowering the chance of dangerous air bubbles traveling to the brain or coronary arteries. The heart is usually vented via the aortic root the right superior pulmonary vein and the pulmonary artery. Less commonly, venting may be performed through the apex of the left ventricle as well. There are several types uh, of aortic vents, each with different indications and uses depending on the type of surgery and the goals of venting, of course. A single purse string is placed on the ascending aorta using two pledgets. The sharp tip of the vent cannula is then carefully inserted directly into the aorta. The purse string is tightened around the cannula and the occluding metal wire is removed. It is then promptly secured with a clamp and the second branch is connected to the suction part of the CPB circuit. This line must be in aspiration, otherwise air could be pushed into the aorta. To ensure safe function, it's essential to test the correct sanction direction and verify the proper occlusion of the tubing. These checks help prevent air embolism and ensure adequate venting. Finally, the cardioplegia line is connected to the vent cannula, allowing the, for proper delivery and drainage during myocardial protection. The vent in the right superior pulmonary vein reduces the volume overload and prevents left ventricle distension. It is essential in cases of aortic insufficiency, where blood may leak back into the LV during bypass. It is often used in mitral valve surgery, aortic valve replacement or aneurysm repairs. A first string suture is made on the right superior pulmonary vein, which lies in front of and a little below the pulmonary artery. A small incision is made. The ventricular vent is inserted typically until the second sign of the cannula, otherwise it can pose a risk of puncturing the ventricle. The purse string suture is tight and secured around the cannula. When the heart is beating and the ventricular vent has to be inserted, the perfusionist needs to keep the left ventricle full of blood. If the left ventricle becomes too empty, especially during systole, it can allow air to enter through the cannula. It can result in a hair embolism, which is a critical complication. The direction of the catheter tip toward the ventricular apex passes through the mitral valve and enters the left ventricle directly. The pulmonary artery trunk is alternatively used as a location for chamber venting. A catheter is introduced into the main pulmonary artery through a purse string suture.
Although uh, placement of a, a pulmonary artery vent reduces circulation from their high tart, it does not address additional sources of the left ventricle filling. It allows some advantages if compared to the left ventricle vent, which can be challenging because it requires more retraction of the heart during the, the, the insertion, with the risk of damaging the left atrium, the ventricle and the mitral valve. The pulmonary venting becomes uh, especially important during uh, redo procedures. In these cases, the pulmonary veins might not be immediately accessible for venting, so using a right heart vent helps us manage the blood return effectively. It is also used in congenital heart surgeries, and these procedures often involve significant pulmonary venous return due to the extensive collateralization, such as in cases with major aortopulmonary collateral arteries, pulmonary uh, arteriovenous malformation, or various shunt lesions. The left ventricular vent through the apex provides direct and rapid decompression of the left ventricle. This is the intraventricular anterior coronary artery. So at the left is the left ventricle and at the right, the right ventricle. This is used in pediatric patients, severe aortic insufficiency or complex serial operations where traditional venting rules are not feasible, but is more invasive and less commonly used in adults. Must be carefully secured to avoid bleeding or injury during winning from bypass. Mainly used when uh, the daring of the left ventricle is ineffective, above all when uh, air is in between the ventricular trabeculae. The purse string uh, has to be deep in the muscle to avoid the risk of pseudo aneurysm of the, of the ventricle and a needle is usually enough to eliminate the air blocked in the ventricle. It can be used even for the daring of the right ventricle when standard, standard venting is ineffective. And this can occur because the right ventricle is positioned higher than the aorta. So by the end, standard surgical maneuvers include filling and venting the heart, the valsalva maneuver, the Trendelenburg position, and needle aspiration. But what else? Flooding the surgical field with carbon dioxide is a technique used to displace air, mainly oxygen and nitrogen. This practice is commonly employed during, during uh, uh, procedures such as open heart surgery to reduce the risk of air embolism, particularly when the heart chambers are open. Uh, it reduced the incidence of intracardiac care by 85%, possibly because of the density and solubility of CO2. And how it works? CO2 is heavier than air, so when it is insufflated into the surgical field, it tends to settle into and fill the space, pushing the lighter air out. And when I speak of lighter air, I speak about uh, oxygen and nitrogen. Specifically, the density of CO2 is 1.5 times that of air. This is crucial in cardiac surgery because air bubbles entering the bloodstream can cause emboli, which may lead to stroke, myocardial infarction or other complications. CO2 is also 360 times more soluble than air in blood, meaning that any small amount that does enter the circulation is more readily absorbed and eliminated by the body, further reducing risk. In addition, it's low cost, simple to implement and provides a high safety benefit, making it a good value in surgeries where the risk of air embolism is significant. Thanks for your attention, stay curious and see you to the next chapter.